Hey everyone, this is Nate and this is the Nader Tater channel. Alright, today we are going to test out home internet. And this is fixed wireless home internet. So it uses the cell network. And we're going to find out if a external antenna or a cell phone booster is going to work better. So right now I'm down in my basement. I get very little to no signal down here at all for cellular. And we'll test out these guys to see how fast they are. I'm pretty sure it's going to be pathetic. And then I'll show you when I put them upstairs in a loft area. So it's at the basically attic level. And on T-Mobile I can hook up an external antenna. On the Verizon one I can't. Uh, I have other videos that go into details about how do you hook up external antennas. As well as how I install my cell phone booster which is a high boost. Uh, 4K plus is the unit I, I got. Um, but these devices can use a cell phone booster but it has pros and cons to it so i'll go through that and most importantly i'm going to test it to see which one's the fastest so um these upstairs in my loft with external antenna are just getting a really good 5g signal this would be on c-band up there in the loft uh, this was also on the 5g ultra capacity so that's the n41 band but then down here in the ad or in the basement, we'll look and see what they get, and then I'll turn on the cell phone booster, which picks up signal from basically the same height as that third floor um, loft, and it repeats it right down here. It's actually about 15 feet behind the camera is where the amplifier is that these guys should pick up. Okay, so let me first go up into the loft and show you how I had these set up just a moment ago so you understand how my baseline is, basically. And then we'll come back down here to the basement and we'll test out uh, how well they connect with no assist, no cell booster, and no external antennas. All right, so I'm up here in my loft. So this is like a third floor type level. So it's right by the attic, actually. And this is where I have my Verizon and my T-Mobile gateways. Now, the Verizon one cannot accept a um, external antenna, but this T-Mobile one does. And so that one's actually through this wall over here. And I have a waveform external antenna that can hook up to either one of my T-Mobile ones. But then for the um, cell booster, actually right outside this window, I'll see if I can show it to you. This here is the uh, the tower. I know it's dark out right now, but right up just above what we can see right now, that is the um, tower mast that has the cell booster at the top of it. So basically it's maybe 10 feet um, difference in vertical height. And then the external antenna is out there in the attic and it's a little bit higher. So they're actually very close together. They're probably 30 feet total apart between external antenna and the cell booster external antenna as well as these gateways are in between those two. So they're all fairly close together. So we're gonna compare the speeds here of, you know, if we're using the external antenna and or the Verizon stock gateway or the cell booster uh, to get the signal down to, to my basement. Now, the signal to the basement goes via ethernet down from here. So there's no loss there. You know, it's a cat six ethernet going down there. So let's test out the speeds. Let's talk about my baseline signal. So this is with those gateways up there on that third floor loft and the T-Mobile ones can use that two by two waveform antenna. And you know, right now it's actually a little bit of um, a lower uh, signal quality than I get uh, typically, but um, it is what it is and so I'm gonna show it. So the T-Mobile one right now, it's on B66 band and N41. And that B66 some, sometimes changes to B2. It just kind of varies up there. But both of those, I'm only getting two bars of signal. And uh, this is a, a side note. You know, the number of bars is not the most critical for getting your speed. And this is, you know, I'll, I'll show you that here. So uh, for those, I am getting 200 and was it 25 megabits per second for download and uh, about 15 and a half megabits per second upload and one of the key things we're going to watch here is the ping so the ping here is 29 milliseconds so that's a, a fairly good ping you know it could be better but it could be way worse so that's the t-mobile unit up there that's the nokia one and that is what i'm saying is my baseline speed 
So next we'll talk about the Verizon one. So the Verizon one that sits right beside it. That one, again, I can't get good um, details of submetrics on that one, but I can tell you the speed. And the speed is about 250 megabits per second download and 20 megabits per second upload. That's on their C-band network. And I know that just because of um, the speeds that are there as well as you know using um, uh, phones I've confirmed that I'm on C-band there as well um, again on this one looking at the ping the ping is 34 milliseconds so uh, very similar to T-Mobile and in, in this case you can see actually the T-Mobile and Verizon up there in the same spot for me are actually fairly similar in performance um, on the surface um, I won't go into details about comparison I have other comparison videos of those okay well let me go grab those gateways and bring them back down here for some testing okay so now we're back here in the basement and I have this T-Mobile one hooked up and I have it through Ethernet just direct to my computer so I'm not going through any kind of Wi-Fi routers or other devices directly connected to it and let's go in there and see just what kind of signal it gets if anything down here in the basement okay so just as I expected um, this T-Mobile one did not do very well down here in the basement now the good thing about the T-Mobile one is that you can get a lot of cell metrics from it so if I look in there at the cell metrics I'll throw them up right here is you know it has the B12 band which is one of their 4G you know legacy bands that um, is really good at coverage but um, it's not very fast and so if you look at my speeds right there it's uh, 1.2 megabits per second download and just a little bit faster than that upload so certainly nothing that you would want to have as your main internet connection so I'm in the basement I can obviously put this guy up higher in my house and I know I can get faster speed but if you are in a location where that is your best speed um, next you want to see can you improve it with a booster so that we'll turn on the booster here in a second and we'll see how the T-Mobile one fares with that I also did a test here with the Verizon and I tested them just where they sit right here and the Verizon one actually did better than the T-Mobile one down here in the basement the downside is I don't have a way to verify what the cell signal or the band is on the Verizon gateway uh, I haven't um, seen a way to, to hack it. I've hacked some of the T-Mobile the ones to get their um, data, but I haven't done that with the Verizon. So I don't know exactly what it is. I do know it's on 4G. It does have an indicator in the settings where it tells you if it's on a 4G LTE band or if it's doing 5G. So for this one, I know that it is uh, 21 megabits per second down and about 2 megabits per second up. So the upload is very similar to the T-Mobile one. But the download is significantly better and for some people uh, that actually might be reasonable speed but I think we can improve it as well again with the booster so the other thing I do want to mention while we're down here is talking about the ping so if you notice the ping on both of them are up in the 80 millisecond range so that's not going to be good for gaming and even with like the Verizon one with 20 uh, megabits per second download you can probably do really 4K streaming, should be okay with that even. Um, it might take a second to, to load and buffer at the start, but it probably won't buffer as you go through it. But even web browsing, when you start getting those higher pings, you'll notice it taking longer just to start to load the page. So you're not gonna be happy with the performance with these two in here in the basement as they sit. So let's turn on the booster and see what happens okay so now I have done the testing with the booster on and installed and both of them see a significant improvement so let's look first at the T-Mobile one so the T-Mobile one you know, before had just the B12 band so that's a 4G band and now it has the B2 band for the primary and it did get N71 as a 5G band and so as a reference, when I'm upstairs just on the first floor, I would get N71, but I needed to get up to the third floor or use my third floor attic external antenna in order to get the N41, which is the ultra capacity uh, band. And that one is at like a two and a half gigahertz frequency. The N71 is at 600 megahertz frequency, give or take. And so that one is more along the lines of uh, 4G. Um, 
frequency band. So anyways, this cell phone booster does pick up that 600 megahertz and actually gives me two bars of the 5G, but it gives me three bars of the 4G band. So when I look at um, you know those metrics, certainly vastly improved over the B12 uh, with this guy just down here. And again, I did not move these units at all. They were tested just like this. And all I did was uh, plug the booster back in. So the speeds for the T-Mobile one all of a sudden went from like that one to two uh, megabits per second speed all the way up to this, um, was it 61? That's my cheat sheet over here. Um, this is 61 megabits per second download and 13 megabits per second upload. And the other important thing to look at it is the ping. So the ping now is down there in the 30 milliseconds. So you know, uh, not quite a third of what they were before. And that is really going to help your surfing speed. So this is a very usable speed. And, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with this. But obviously, if you compare it to where I had it when I had the gateway up there and using, um, you know, even the gateway by itself, but even even better using the external antenna up there, you get vastly better speeds. And so that's really because the cell booster is not a Nemo setup and it really can't take advantage of um, that dual um, or you know this really has um, kind of four by four uh, capability there with the built in it has four antennas built in and really the cell booster is effectively just one of those antennas up there so it certainly helps a lot but my external antenna is a two by two and you can, if you really are hardcore, you can get a 4x4 external antenna. And that would be better than the cell booster. But um, if you already have a cell booster, it will help your internet here. So let's look at the Verizon one now. Again, the Verizon one, I can't get details on what cell signal it got uh, from here. But I can tell you the, the speed improvement, and that is... Now up to uh, 56 megabits per second download, and it looks like about 7.5 megabits per second upload. Um, the ping did drop. It didn't drop as far as the T-Mobile one, and uh, so it's in the, like the 50 millisecond range. But again, this is a very usable uh, device. I, I would, in general, have no complaints about using this for any kind of home use, uh, streaming, internet surfing, uh, downloading games at 50 milliseconds you're really not going to probably like a lot of the first person shooter games that really need the low latency but um, other than that this would suffice and be a good internet service if you're used to something like DSL but again this this box really the key to this Verizon box is getting the C band and the C band is again in this um, this mid um, frequency, you know, it's a mid band as they kind of refer to it, and that's up there in the several gigahertz uh, frequency band, and so that's again where this booster isn't picking that up and it's not sending that 5G signal to this box. So that again is the drawback to the boosters is they aren't going to pick up those uh, necessarily um, higher frequency bands unless you really look at the details and understand what bands. Do they pick up and how do they repeat them? That is a good option for Verizon since you can't do an extra antenna. So if you're stuck and you really need to improve this Verizon one, it's your only option. Maybe you don't have any T-Mobile service. The booster does work. You know, overall, I would say um, I obviously would pick a waveform external antenna as my first option if I wanted to improve my speed, and I would go for a two by two uh, unless you really think you're um, needing a 4x4. The 4x4 is probably going to help people that get the N41 band the most. That way you can really uh, take advantage of that um, that bandwidth, that capability of, of that uh, band. But otherwise, a 2x2 two two would work great and um, would take care of most people's for the T-Mobile stuff. But um, if you do want a cell booster, uh, this high boost one that I'm using, Again, you can see that it does work and it does provide improvements. So uh, it's kind of up to you on which one works best in your specific uh, scenario. But I hope this was helpful for everyone and you enjoyed it. As always, like the video, subscribe to the channel to learn more. 
if you want to see more stuff out there do check out my channel i have lots of playlists out there where i try to organize um, things like just verizon and just t-mobile uh, content for you so you can you can really hone in on those things i also have a bunch of other completely unrelated to uh, home internet um, playlists and content out there so check it out and thanks for watching